Hi, everybody. Earlier this week, the parents of former Washington State quarterback Tyler Holinsky shared a stunning update about their son's health months after he took his own life. Kim and Mark Holinsky say an autopsy of Tyler's brain conducted at the Mayo Clinic revealed he had CTE. That brain disease has been linked to chronic head trauma and concussions. Tyler joins a growing number of athletes with CTE. As of last year, the brains of 110 former NFL players were found posthumously to have the disease, raising all kinds of questions about health and safety. Here to share his own struggles with the after effect of concussions is former Seahawks linebacker Michael Jackson, along with Dr. Dirk Keen, Chief of Neuropathology at UW Medicine. Thank you both for being here. It's, um, it's emotional to yeah. talk about Tyler. What, yeah. what was your reaction to that? I was shocked. Uh, a kid that age, 21 years old. With his whole life in yeah, front of him. Yeah, whole life ahead of you. Got a career coming up that's uh, yeah, at, that's, there's nothing you can say that's going to make anybody feel good about it. It, it was a crime. Dr. Keene, um, the parents did not say this is what caused Tyler's suicide. Um, they just released the fact that this was the case. When you look at those results, or CTE in general, can you tell us what it is exactly and what it does to the brain and to behavior? That's a great question. CTE is a pathologic diagnosis that's, that's uh, that's performed at autopsy, so it can only be, be diagnosed at autopsy. It is characterized by a deposition of a pathologic protein called tau. The more tau you have, the higher stage of CTE that, that you have in the brain. And Tyler, from reports, I have not examined his brain, uh, but had stage one CTE. So that means that there are microscopic uh, lesions in, in scattered areas of his brain. And so it, he's not the first, unfortunately, he's not the first young person, the young adult that's had this, di this disease diagnosed in his brain. Um, uh, and uh, we don't have, we really don't understand the effects of, th of these lesions on, uh, his, on his behavior, on his cognition, on how, how, um, how, how those lesions really affect the way a person thinks and behaves. And so much research is needed to really understand that relationship. And do we have any idea as we see um, more intense versions of CTE with people is can we connect that with behavior? So we, what we really need is a way to diagnose CTE during life. Which would be great. Why can't we? I mean, we have all these scanners and gizmos, but we can't. We it, can't see this stuff. It's a great. It's a great question. There's there's uh, the tau protein itself. There are clinical trials now for uh, imaging called PET imaging to identify tau in the brain of living people. The sensitivity of those of those scans is low, and so something that it's microscopic, may not even be able to be picked up. And again, that's just in clinical trials. So there are, there are efforts to, uh, to develop these, these what we call biomarkers. Uh, what would be great would be to have a blood biomarker or a behavioral biomarker, something that you could come in and take a, a written test and you'd be mm -hmm. able to diagnose CTE. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of work that's being done to try to, to, try to, to, try to develop those tests. But because it's such a small lesion and because tau doesn't just happen in CTE, tau happens in lots of diseases, including Alzheimer's disease. And so what we really need is something that specifically shows us th this is CTE. And then we need to be able to, to, to use that to study people who may be at risk for CTE, to diagnose people with it during life, and then to, and then to study those people compared to people who don't have it to really understand how does that relate to depression or anxiety or, or cognition. And how to treat it. Um, Michael, you played linebacker, and it's right. not like there's an easy position on the team, but you're just in a car wreck every right. play, basically. Yeah. How many concussions did you have? I can remember two playing with the Seahawks. You can remember I two. I can remember two, but we were talking earlier today, Dirk and I, and what people need to understand is every time you're a football player, every time you hit somebody, you're, concuss you're concussing. You're knocking yourself out. You're right. seeing those stars. So, and, and that over time builds up into a major concussion. And, and the injuries that happen are, are, are unseen at that point. Because every time he's getting hit on the field, his brain is yeah. rattling around in his head, right? So it's, it's, it's a really important point, right? The, the, the idea is that subconcussive blows may cause brain injury. And in fact, we're, I'm, it's certain that subconcussive blows can cause some injury. The, the real question is how much, yeah. right? And what is the threshold? And how does that differ among different people? It may be that some people can have subconcussive 
impacts and their brain is fine and other people's may people may be much more vulnerable and so to really understand that we need to study the exposures in relation to, to again back to a biomarker some way to diagnose this to really understand who's at risk and what are the exposures that cause this and then as you said once we once we understand that we can prevent it and then Hopefully. we can treat it but meantime as a mother that is so frightening to think about that long timeline or for somebody like Michael or people who are playing today, not just football, but other yeah. sports and the military, various right. ways. You have <clears throat> shared that you've struggled with anxiety and depression. Do you think it's connected to what happened? With I your think head? it is, but I can't prove it. Uh, nobody can prove it. So there's this part of me that I used to have really bad anger issues, but I kind of felt like it was because I was trained to be aggressive mm -hmm. as a football player and I took that off the field and took it into my private life. I've learned to deal with those issues now and I can relax and I know how to pull myself away from a situation. But I still suffer from those days that it just, it's, it's hard to go on. It, have you ever felt suicidal? I have. I'm not ashamed to say it. That's how bad it's gotten yeah. at times. Yeah. No, you shouldn't be ashamed to yeah. say it because if we don't talk about these yeah. things, nothing's going to get right. any better. Um, sometimes I have trouble just coming right out and asking it, yeah. but I appreciate yeah. it. And, and so what is it like, do you think, not only for yourself, but for active players as some of this information comes out and they're thinking, okay, I'm 30 years old, I've got yeah. two kids, I've got a future, what yeah. am I going to do? What, what is that like for the individual making that decision? I think it's part of, downstairs, Dirk and I were talking, it's part of the gladiator days. Uh, they're getting paid to be gladiators. One day the gladiators figured out that there weren't any more gladiators walking around, so they stopped gladiating. Football players need to take a look at that. This thing is real. Something's happening to our brain. Something, something is happening to our behaviors. Are we being paid well enough to continue doing this? Some is there any amount of money? That's the thing you have to struggle with. And, and as a fan, um, I have to say, I think about that all the time. Yeah. We used to laugh about when we were growing up, and I'm sure you did too. Somebody got their bell rung right. and it was like, whoa, tough yeah. guy, you know, that was, right. what a hit, blah, blah, blah. I can't help it. When I see it now on the field, I just think, oh my God, I'm cheering for something that yeah. may have affected this right. person's life and his family's life forever, and it's... And I'm a football fan, yeah, you know, yeah. so I don't know how to think about this. What, what would you advise parents? Um, my kid played baseball, got hit in the head a couple of times with a batted ball as a pitcher. You know, that was bad enough. So it's soccer, football, the military, lots of different um, walks of life. People suffer head injuries pretty frequently. Oh, yeah. So I'm a parent. I have two great kids. My daughter's a basketball player in college, and my son is a soccer player. And so I've thought about these same, these same issues. It's really difficult. And the reason it's really difficult is because we don't know enough to make yeah. an informed decision. We, we have seen, as, as we've talked about today, a lot of the former football players, uh, most of the former NFL players that have been examined have had this CTE pathology in their brains. But we really, and, and Tyler, of course, is a young, is a young man. Yeah. We've seen other young Just men who yeah. have, this, who have this, this le these lesions in their brain. But we've, we still really don't know the effect of youth sports, right, of, of, of amateur sports to, to a great extent. And so again, um, the benefits of sports cannot be uh, cannot be uh, need to be considered as well, right? I mean, obesity is a tremendous risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, for dementia, for heart disease, for all these other things. Yeah, but if you just run, you're probably not going to hit your head on somebody else's. <laughs> it, it's a great, it's a great right, right. So safe sports. So I'm I'm not a clinician, and I and I and I don't want to advise parents on what decisions they should make. But as a parent, I can say, and as a, as a person who's educated about this 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 disease as, in the current form is that we don't know enough to really understand yeah. the risk. And having said that, I think, I think we need the, pu the public awareness is absolutely essential. And the, 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 if there's anything good that comes out of stories like Tyler's is that the media are paying attention yeah. to it. Absolutely. Michael and I are able to sit here and talk to you about this. And that hopefully will stimulate funding to really do the kind of prospective trials in kids, in adults, in professional athletes, in military people to really understand what are the exposure limits and what are the consequences, right? And what are the end results? as far as behavior and that sort of thing. And then the one other thing I want to say is as far as, as, far as mental health, right, we have, we, we already have great, um, great 
great practices and protocols to, to, to help people with mental health issues regardless of the cause, right? And so even if CTE is causing depression or anxiety or any of these problems, I think it can be risky because we know that there is no treatment for CTE and if people think they have a symptom because of CTE right. that it's not they treatable. They might not go get help. Right. That's right. We've got to break through that stigma and that's one of the reasons why I'm so yeah. pleased that you said what you said yeah. because people suffer in silence and right. I would imagine you guys who have to believe you're bulletproof to go out yep. on the field might not be first in line to right. say I need help but no. we you know we've got to reach out in all those different ways same things with a lot of military people we're yeah. seeing increased brain injury head injury what are you seeing with that with veterans with veterans veterans also have uh, some veterans especially those exposed to blast like we're seeing in Iraq and Afghanistan have have some CTE but there's other kinds of brain lesions that we're seeing that have been described that are a little bit differently they're more focused in the brain stem and the cerebellum which are deeper parts of the brain and so Michael and I were talking earlier, different kinds of exposures, boxing, we've known about CT in boxing yes. for a long time, yes. football, military blast, car accident, traumatic brain yep. injury, they, they all can cause damage and there's, there's probably overlap, but the bottom line is we really need to understand what is the exposure limit, how do we diagnose it, and therefore how do we treat it. Is there anything to be done with equipment right away? I realize that part of what we're talking about is the reverberation of the brain inside the skull, but should the soft part of the helmet be on the outside, for example? I mean, what is there anything that can be done with equipment? That's a great question, and I'm not an expert on equipment. I will say, I remember, and you know more about this than me probably, but I think that a while back the NFL tried a softer outside helmet, and it was causing its own problems with right. neck injuries. Um, having said that, Absolutely, we should be trying to make, to make better and better equipment. Um, we should be doing everything we can on every aspect of this, from the diagnostics to all the preventive measures, including, including the, the, the way the sports are conducted to be safer, right? So I think exactly. all of that should be investigated, but until we really understand how the cause, the exposure, it'll be hard for us to really hone in on, on, on how to prevent that. And I'm sure you know Maybe more about the equipment side of it. Maybe any and everything is what we should be trying to I, make I sure agree. people it's, are it's, safe. It's and true. Michael, I want to give you the last word. If there's anybody out there who is suffering from some of these symptoms and they think, oh, you know, just tough it out, rub some dirt on it, what would you say? Uh, you're not going to tough it out. It's going to be hard to tough it out. Go get the help. The help is there. That's what they're, that's what doctors like Dirk, that's what they do. They help people get better. Uh, I have a friend that I work with at Nexus who uh, is my confidant. I can go to him and ask him any questions. Mm -hmm. I can confess what's going on in my life. Get help. We're not that tough. Nobody needs to be that no, tough. No. Thank you so much. Thank you for the information. We have linked valuable resources about concussions, head trauma, and CTE on New Day's homepage if you'd like to read up some more. And then up next, a look at the group tasked with preserving Seattle's history. We'll be right back.